Welcome back to Enocrats. Today we're coming to you live from the White Room. Now, not many people get to see this room. This is where a lot of the work happens. So, guess what? Coming up on the show today, we're going to be talking about the Mac OS. We're going to be looking at jailbreaking your iPod. And then we're going to touch on the rather passionate debate of Mac versus PC. Don't press any buttons. We'll be right back. Computer Alley today is brought to you by eLearning Jamaica. E-learning is free learning. So we're talking about the Mac OS. Now, Mac OS is the operating system from Apple, or one of the operating systems from Apple, because they also have the iOS, which is used in their portable and media devices, and that is different from the OS that they use for their um, laptop and desktop products. They are one of the few companies who actually create both the hardware and the software for items that they, that they manufacture and sell. Um, this has given them uh, better leverage in the market as well as made them more profitable. So as much as people talk about Microsoft all the time, Microsoft only creates software and then the hardware comes from different um, OEM vendors like Dell, HP, Acer and so forth whereas Apple creates both its own hardware and software. Mac OS started back in about 1984. Of course, back then it wasn't called Mac OS, but it, has, it eventually developed into what we now refer to as OS X or Mac OS. OS X is built on top of Linux. The particular version that was used as the foundation or the kernel would have been BSD. So what Apple did was to create this wonderful graphical interface on top of this Linux kernel to create the wonderful product that everybody now uses and knows as OS X. Up until 2005, Apple used to use what is called a PowerPC architecture and a PowerPC processor, which I believe was built by IBM. In 2005, they switched over and started using Intel processors. So pretty much these days, the hardware that is in an Apple is the same that you would find in an Intel-based PC, which brought about an interesting scenario. The first time I mentioned to somebody that you could actually load OS X or the Mac operating system on a PC, they said I was absolutely crazy. That could not happen. And I did it and showed them. And today you have, it is now referred to as what is called hacking touch where you'll have persons who take the OSS that is built from Mac and install it on a regular PC, Intel-based PC. Granted, in doing so, you are going against the license which is distributed with the Mac OS. However, it can be done. Today, uh, you may come across what is referred to as classic OS X. So, when they started with building the Mac OS back in 84, they got up to the point where they're up to 9.2 and then they switched over to 10. Now, the OS X 9.2, which is referred to as classic, is not compatible with the hardware that was designed for 10. So you had to run that in emulation mode. So you still might encounter a few machines which are still running OS X 9.2. Um, today, most of the machines are running 10, and in fact, they are up to 10.7. And I don't know why Apple have this designation. They, keep, they, they, they name their OSs after animals. So you have Cheetah, Panther, Jaguar, Lion, Mountain Lion, uh, Leopard, Snow Leopard. I am wondering when they are going to run out of cats. Now the Mac OS is known for its brilliant display or how it looks. It is said that it is one of the best looking operating systems. It is also touted as one of, the, one of the easiest operating systems to use. If you talk to anybody who uses Mac, one of the things they'll say is that it is just so easy to use, intuitive. You don't even have to think. If you've never used a Mac before, you don't have to spend any time learning it because everything is intuitive. Also, 
the resources that are required to run a Mac, because of the underlying Unix and Linux foundation, it is very efficient at utilizing the resources of the PCs. So the specs on a Mac can be way less and give you similar or the same performance as a regular PC with the same specifications. The Mac OS is also touted as one of the most stable operating systems anywhere. It is said that Macs don't crash. Of course, that is merely a myth, but that might have been because the cases of Macs crashing were or appear to be far and few in between. Additionally, that could be easily attributed to the fact that since there are way, way more PCs in use than Macs, the reported case of PCs crashing would be significantly more than Mac because PC still has roughly 90% of the computing market. Now I'm going to give you a quick run through of the OS X interface. Take a look. Installing an application on a Mac is actually quite simple. For persons who are accustomed to Windows, you'll be expecting to see an EXE file. Well, for Mac, the file format you'll be coming across would be a DMG or IMG. And to install these applications on a Mac, it is simple as dragging those image files or the installer file into the applications folder. And that is it. It takes care of the rest. That is how simple it is to install an application on a Mac. Computer Alley today is brought to you by eLearning Jamaica. eLearning is free learning. Coming up after the break, I'm going to try to break out of jail using my iPad. Yo, my youth, if you want pass the CXC, well, here is a easy way. Go on YouTube and bust a one search and find e-learning JA. I tell you e-learning, that wanna make history. Study English, maths and chemistry. E-learning, free learning, so be learning with e-learning. Students nowadays have it easier than when I was a little young studying for exams. Why? Because they have e-learning to help them with 11 different subjects like biology, physics, social studies. So check out eLearnJA at youtube.com. Remember, e-learning is F-R-E-E, -E, free learning. Jailbreaking is a process of removing the limitations on Apple devices running the iOS by using either hardware or software exploits. 
Now, when you do this, it allows you to download applications and programs and themes and other software from sources other than the Apple Store. So what Apple does is it, it limits you or ties the device so that you can only download and install applications or software that are approved by it and placed into the Apple um, Store. If you would like to install an additional software or any software that is not available in the Apple Store, you would have to basically do a process which is called jailbreaking. Jailbreaking works for the iOS OSs and these are the OSs that are used on the various mobile products mainly from Apple. So you're looking at your iPods, your iPads, your iPods, your iPod Touch and even Apple TV. There are various tools available to you to do jailbreaking on the devices. Um, some of the names that persons from the Apple community will be familiar with are like uh, Season Pass, uh, Evasion. Also, by far the most popular um, alternate store to the Apple Store once you have jailbroken your device is Cydia. So Cydia allows you to install additional software. In addition to that, they have a platform that congregates all of these applications so then you can go through and choose which applications you'd like to install on your device from the Cydia store. Some of us in the computing field, like myself, really do feel that jailbreaking should not be illegal. And apparently, so does the United States federal government. Because in 2010, a law was passed which said that it is not illegal to jailbreak all your Apple devices. However, what Apple themselves have said is that if you proceed to jailbreak your device, you have voided your warranty. So should an issue arise and you need to claim on your warranty, what you'd have to do is restore it back to the original software which, with which the device came. And that can be done. When you jailbreak your device, it doesn't actually stop you from still getting stuff from the Apple Store. You can still get all your stuff from the Apple Store. It just allows you to, in addition to getting stuff from the Apple Store, to get it from elsewhere. For persons in Jamaica with iPad, it is a tricky situation. The US or the Apple Store will not accept your credit card if the billing address is in Jamaica or if the billing address is outside the US and not one of the approved countries outside the US. Therefore, if you have an iPod, to even go through the, the registration process, you are limited because it requires you to have a credit card with a valid US address. So for you, jailbreaking becomes a necessity rather than an option. There are two types of jailbreak. One is called a tethered jailbreak and an untethered jailbreak. Now the difference between the both are as follows. With a tethered jailbreak, if you restart the iPod, then the, the jailbreak or the removal of the restrictions disappear and it goes back to the Apple original state. With an untethered jailbreak, once you jailbreak it, it stays like that unless you take an update from Apple which during the update process removes the exploit that is used to jailbreak the device. So which is one of the reasons why when you jailbreak a device um, persons will advise you not to take any updates until they are approved meaning that once a new update comes out the persons who are very skilled at creating these exploits and these jailbreaks would then look at the new update and find a way to create a jailbreak for that version and then they will say you can go ahead and update and use this to recreate your jailbreak. Now you might be wondering okay uh, where do I get the jailbreak or who does the jailbreak or who are these persons who are doing the jailbreak? Well as with most things, most things in the computer world the jailbreaks are generally created by teams of very talented developers who just would like to do stuff with the device which they have purchased. They just wait for the latest up, um, version of the OSR update to come out and then they find a way to jailbreak it to remove the limitations so they can do whatever it is they want to do with their devices. So for the most part, you don't have to worry that the jailbreak is a Trojan being created by someone to hijack your device. Um, granted that that risk always exists, but for the most part, it is, it is minimal because 
there are so many persons who are using these exploits and once they're created you have another team of persons who take it go through it just to make sure that it is safe and if they find anything they will let the community know another good reason to jailbreak your device is the benefit of being able to run applications that says they are designed for the US only so a lot of very good applications that you'd like to use when you try to use them on your iPad it might say okay this is designed to only run in the US or this is for US um, consumers only now if you want to be able to run that you can jailbreak your device and that will allow you to, to, to access or use a lot of those services by either using an additional software to remove the limitation of your location or just by the mere fact that you can just remove the, the limitation to say that it should only run on tab devices within the US. Let's get social. Would you be willing to jailbreak your device so that you are able to load applications and programs that are not available in the Apple Store? Take it to Facebook and Twitter, Total Technocrat. Coming up next, I'm going to jump into the rather passionate discussion of Mac versus PC. Yo, my youth, if you want pass the CXC, well, here is an easy way. Go on YouTube and bust a one search and find e-learning J.A. I tell you e-learning, that wanna make history. Study English, maths and chemistry. E-learning, free learning, so be learning with e-learning. Students nowadays have it easier than when I was a little young studying for exams. Why? Because they have e-learning to help them with 11 different subjects like biology, physics, social studies. So check out eLearnJA at youtube.com. Remember, e-learning is F-R-E-E, -E, free learning. Now I'm going to join the discussion of which is better, Mac or PC. Now as usual, I am not one to, to go based on brands or features. I am more of a practical person. So what I am going to do is I am going to look at the, the features and specs of a Mac, then look at the features and specs of a PC, then look at the style and sleekness of a Mac, look at the style and sleekness of a PC, and then let you decide. If we're talking about style and sleekness, obviously Mac gets maybe like an 8 out of 10 in that department. When you look at a MacBook, they're, they're nice, they're clean, the design is clean. And personally, I like the fact that there are no real protrusions. See, it's uniform, there are no protrusions. I like that. It's relatively thin, which is also something that I do like. This one in particular, it has a little weight to it. So this is about um, four pounds. But of course, you know, there's a Mac Air, which is... Let's now look at what a PC with comparable specs is going to run you. 
when you look at price versus specs a mac seems a whole lot more money than most pcs and even for pcs with the same specs as the mac and even better uh, people will say well you're paying for reliability because the mac doesn't crash you're paying for the aesthetics you're paying for the significantly higher resolution of the screen and those kind of things but the question you then ask is if you are talking about reliability wouldn't it, the ability to have two machines be, re, be more reliable than having a single machine so if something goes wrong with one all it is is to take the backup from one put it on the other one and you're good to go again if you have a single Mac and the Mac goes bad you have to wait for it to be repaired before you can proceed uh, in terms of the resolution and the screen the components in the Mac are pretty much the same as the components in PCs because since 2005 it is using PC architecture so it's the same Intel processor the same Intel board it is the same DDR3 memory Apple doesn't make any screen so the screen is either made by one of those companies like Foxconn or Samsung or LG you can get the same screen granted maybe not at the resolution but realistically is the higher resolution worth a thousand US dollars let's look at a MacBook and a PC compare the specs specs for specs and price for price and then you tell me which you believe is a better buy so I am looking at the 2013 15 inch with retinal display MacBook so it's a 15.4 inch the resolution is very very good it comes with a 2.4 gigahertz quad core i7 boost up to 3.4 or you can get it as 2.7 gigahertz quad core i7 boost up to 3.7 it has 8 gigs of um, 1600 megahertz ddr3 onboard ram it also has uh, 256 gigabyte um, configurable to 512 or 768 gigs of flash storage so this is a solid state hard drive and an nvidia geforce 650 with 1 gigabyte of ddr5 um, an automatic graphics switching which means that what it will do it will run on the Intel HD graphics and when you're doing extensive graphics where it need more processing power it will switch over to the to the GeForce graphics card you have a webcam give you HD Bluetooth wireless microphone speakers backlit keyboard full-size multi-touch trackpad double tapping but the battery life the battery will give you up to seven hours depending on usage and your configuration it also has a usb3 port thunderbolt, thunderbolt connections hdmi so really and truly for 200 dollars more you could purchase two of these machines so which to you would be a better deal purchasing a single mac for 2200 us as opposed to purchasing two laptops with almost exact specs for almost half the price. Lee McClarty here for Technocrats. We are by UA, the premier educational facility here. We are asking the question, which do you use, Mac or PC? I use a PC. PC. Well, I use PC still. You ever use a Mac? Uh, yeah, not a big fan of it. No, but I've, ne I've never used one before. Why are you not a big fan of a Mac? I guess it's just the user interface itself and how I would relate to it so to speak but I'm more a fan of Android. Have you ever used a Mac? Yes it's amazing and if I had money I'd have a Mac. Which operating system do you use? Uh, well mostly on portable devices um, Android but on my computer it's just Windows. Right now? Yeah. Uh, P is it Microsoft? PC? What is it? I don't know. Windows is do you use a Windows based machine or That's a Mac? That's what it machine? is. I couldn't remember that way. Windows is what I use. If you had to choose between a PC and a Mac you definitely choose a PC. Yeah. Mark, definitely. Why? Because it's just nicer. Would you buy it? I, I guess if I see the need where it's necessary for whatever I have to do. You don't find viruses being built for iPod or Apple devices, right? Well, definitely I heard that since I like drawing, I heard that Macs are better for artists. Even though it is like twice the cost of a similar PC. That's probably the reason why I would use it and most people don't. For you, one of the more important things in purchasing your PC is 
is how good it looks. Yeah, because Windows 8 is ugly mm -hmm. and it doesn't look user friendly. So it's, so it's, uh, it's aesthetic as well as user friendly. Yeah. Um, maybe it's because I grew up on PC, so like Mac seems a bit too confusing to me. Like everything, like there's so many features to it, but it's, everything is kind of messy to me. And there's too many things you can do when you don't know what you're doing. Happening. But I don't know. What I'm doing I've heard that the Macs are expensive and I've also heard that their interface is as bad as Windows can be, that the Mac interface takes a little while to get accustomed to and it's not as user friendly. I tend to get information regarding the PC, more information regarding the PC on the internet if I'm researching something. So even if I was giving you one for free, you wouldn't take it? Yes, I would. <laughs> <laughs> so you don't think it would make more sense to buy two machines for the same price you'd have purchased the Mac 4? No. 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 So just for the record, you don't work at Mac. Yeah. All right. Let's get social. My question to you today is this. If you could purchase two PCs for the price of a Mac with the same specs as the Mac, which would you choose? Take it to Facebook and Twitter. Keep the conversation going. Total technocrat. Today we looked at the Mac OS, we looked at jailbreaking your iOS devices, and we looked at Mac versus PC. This has been Technocrats, thank you for watching. And remember to keep it social and continue the conversation on Facebook and Twitter at Total Technocrat. See you next week. It's official. The king of gadgets heats up the airwaves on TVJ with a hot new technology show, Technocrats, where Dean teaches you technology. Get the latest news and reviews for all the cool tech around the world. Tune in every Thursday at 6 p.m. or catch our live broadcast on televisionjamaica.com. You can also see Technocrats rebroadcast every Monday at 1 p.m. For all things Technocrats, go to our Facebook page, Total Technocrats.